In this video, I'm going to walk through the code needed to create a map showing hotspots of a particular type of crime. And by hotspot, I mean places where there is more crime than we would expect by chance. I'm going to do that using the hotspot gi star function from the sf hotspot package. And as an example, I'm going to make a map of hotspots of robbery in Nottingham, England in 2022. I'm going to start the code with a short note explaining what it does so that if I need to come back to this code in a few months time, I'll be able to tell straight away what it's for. I'm also going to break the code up using header comments to make it easier to see which bit of the code does what. I'll need four packages for this code. The GG spatial package to add a base map to my map. The SF package to handle spatial processes like clipping datasets to specific areas. The SF hotspot package to identify crime hotspots and a tidyverse package for various data management tasks like loading data. I need two lots of data for this script, a data set showing the locations of robberies and a data set showing the boundaries of Nottingham Council wards. The wards data set is a geo package file, so I know that it will already be set up with a coordinate system. The robberies data set is a CSV file, so once I've loaded it, I need to convert it to a spatially aware SF object using the st as sf function. If I look at this data set, I'll see that there are two columns in the data called longitude and latitude. This tells me that I can use the EPSG code 4326 to specify how R should convert the coordinates to locations on the Earth's surface. At the same time as loading the data, I'm going to transform both data sets to use the British National Grid coordinate system which has the EPSG code 27700. I'm doing this because the hotspot GI star function does not work on coordinates that use longitude and latitude. Now I've set up the data I need, I can use it to find the hotspots. The main function we need to identify hotspots of points is the hotspot GI star function from the SF hotspot package. This function is called hotspot GI star because it uses the GI star statistic to identify which parts of the area covered by our crime data contain more crimes than we would expect by chance. Hotspot GI star works by placing a grid of cells over the crime data and counting how many crimes occurred in each cell. The function then compares how many crimes happened in each cell and the cells adjacent to it, compared to what we would expect the distribution of those counts to be by chance, or if there were no spatial patterns in the crime data. From that, we can identify cells that are in areas with more crimes than we would expect them to have by chance. You might notice that some cells have been highlighted even though there have been no robberies in that cell. And that's because they're adjacent to cells that have had several robberies. Conversely, there are some cells in which robberies have occurred that have not been highlighted because there have been no other robberies in the immediate area. This happens because there's an element of chance in whether a crime will be recorded as happening just one side or just the other side of the boundary between two cells. So it's important to look at the number of robberies in the cells around each cell as well as in the cell itself. Once we've identified which cells have more robberies than we would expect by chance, we need to know which of those cells to prioritise. We do that by estimating the density of crimes in each part of the map then prioritising those cells that are in areas with more robberies than we would expect by chance, and that have the highest density of robberies. The statistical processes that Hotspot GI Star uses to find hotspots can be controlled by setting various arguments, but Hotspot GI Star will choose reasonable default values for any of the settings we do not specify. In this case, I've specified that Hotspot GI Star should use a grid of 100 meter cells. And by default, Hotspot GI Star also calculates kernel density estimates for each grid cell, using the same Hotspot KDE function that we've covered in previous videos. This means we can control how the density estimates are made using the same arguments as we would use for the Hotspot KDE function. In this case, I've set the bandwidth adjust argument to a value of less than 1 to produce a density map with more detail than we would get by default. The result produced by Hotspot GI Star is an SF object containing several columns. Since we're using the function inside a pipeline, we won't see the results that it produces by default. But if we ran the function on its own, we'd see that the results look like this. So we can see that there is a column called N, 
containing the count of robberies in each cell, a KDE column containing the density estimate, a GI star column giving the GI star statistic, and a p-value column containing a p-value. And together, these give us all the information we need to plot hotspots on a map. Interpreting the GI star and p-value columns is straightforward. If the value in the p-value column is less than 0.05, we can say that the number of robberies in that cell and the cells surrounding it is significantly different to the number of robberies we'd expect if robberies were randomly distributed across Nottingham. We can tell whether that means there are more or fewer robberies than we'd expect by looking at the GI star column. If the number of robberies in the area containing a cell is more than we would expect by chance, the value of GI star will be greater than zero. If the number of robberies is less than we'd expect, the value of the GI star column would be less than zero. We can use these two columns together to extract only those grid cells that are in areas with significantly more robberies than we would expect by chance. To do this, we use filter and specify we want to keep cells with a value of GI star greater than zero and a value of p-value less than 0.05. Finally, since Hotspot GI Star creates a grid based on the area surrounding the robbery points, it's important that we use ST Intersection to clip the result to the area for which we actually have data. And we've learned more about why that's important in previous videos. Now we have the information we need, we can plot it on a map. First, we'll add a base map. Next, we add a layer showing the density of robberies but remembering that the robbery GI object contains only the grid cells in areas with significantly more robberies than we would expect by chance. Now we add a layer showing the boundaries of each ward in Nottingham, which readers might find useful to help locate where each hotspot is. We could also add other layers here to help readers, for example by adding labels for places with the highest density of robberies, if we wanted to. Now we'll add a scale function to control the colours that show the density of robberies. In previous videos, we generally used the scale fill distiller function, but in this case, I've used scale fill gradient instead. I've done that because scale fill distiller uses very light colors for the cells with the lowest values, which gives them very low visual prominence. That's normally fine because in our previous density maps, we've been showing the density of crime for every cell in the grid, even those with little or no crime. But on this map, we've already filtered out those cells. So every cell that we're showing on the map is a cell with more crime than we'd expect by chance. That means those cells are potentially important, and so we need to make sure they're clearly visible. To do that, we can use scale fill gradient and set the colors representing the highest and lowest values manually. This ensures that even the cells with the lowest values are shown on the map as light blue, rather than being shown as almost white if we'd use scale fill distiller. We also add some labels to the map to help readers understand what it shows, as well as fulfilling our legal requirements to acknowledge the sources of the data we've used. Then finally, we slightly adjust the default map theme to make the titles slightly less visually prominent. We now have a map of places in Nottingham with more robberies than we would expect by chance. We could use this to help the police understand where best to carry out patrols, or to help the city council decide where to spend money on situational crime prevention measures such as better lighting but we can use this same map for lots of different applications when it comes to preventing crime. 